Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. And before we get started, I want to give you a little bit of a backstory on this PC we're about to take a look at. This iBuy Power PC has been sitting at my local Walmart for the past two months. It's been in the same exact spot. It's $749, and when I initially saw it, I wanted to pick it up. But unfortunately, I didn't know the specs on it. I scan it with the app, nothing comes up. The associate also tried scanning it and it wasn't in the system. So what happened here is somebody ordered this online and had it shipped to the store. The only thing that we know about it is it's powered by an Intel CPU. I don't know if it's a 10th gen. I don't know if it's an 11th gen. I mean, I don't even know if it's a 7th gen. Nothing on the box whatsoever indicates what GPU we have, what kind of storage we have. All we know is it's an iBuyPower Slate MR. And if I search this on Walmart's website, I get a list of about 50 different PCs. So I figured I'd go ahead and pick it up and see if we get lucky. So basically what we have here is an iBuyPower mystery spec PC from Walmart. And we're about to see if it was worth $749. After tax, it was around $801. Now the picture on the box shows an RTX GPU and a water cooling system for this CPU. I seriously doubt that's what we have in here. And there's a good chance that this only has a GT710, an old 700 series from NVIDIA and an older i5 Intel CPU. But I'm really hoping for at least a GTX 1650 or a 1650 Super. So we do have RGB fans up front, one in the rear. Obviously not water cooled at all, and this is definitely looking like a GT 1030 to me. So after inspecting the card, it's a Gigabyte GT 1030 with 2 gigabytes of RAM. It probably has GDDR5, which does make a difference with these cards, but for $800 it's not looking like a really good deal right now. Still not sure which CPU we have, but this board does support 11th gen Intel CPUs, and we only have 8GB of RAM running in single channel. Taking a look around back here, cable management isn't as bad as I thought it would be, but uh, if we take a look at that SSD, this is a cheaper 480GB 2.5 inch drive, and I'm not exactly sure which power supply this thing's using. So I've went through the Windows setup, let's go ahead and see what we got here. We have the i5-11400F at 2.6 GHz. This is 6 cores, 12 threads. 8 GB of DDR4 and single channel, only running at 2400 MHz. That 480 GB, 2.5 inch SSD. And the GT1030. So far it's not looking great for an $800 gaming PC, but I'm still going to test this thing out and see what we can do with it. And by the way, the GT1030 is a GDDR5 version. I was really hoping it wasn't DDR4 because it really makes a big difference with these little GPUs. So before we get into testing, I wanted to see what it would take for me to build something like this right now. I know GPU prices are crazy, but I'm always scouring eBay, and I found these GT1030s for a decent deal in the kind of market we're in right now. So with everything basically the same, even with the tempered glass case, this would come out to around 621, even with those RGB fans. Something you really don't need. You could cut those RGB fans out and add another 8 gigabytes of RAM for around the same exact price. Now keep in mind, these were prices on new stuff. With that GT1030, I've seen these as low as $98, even in the market we're in right now, on eBay used. So if you wanted to build a system like this, you could get out $200 cheaper. Keep in mind, after everything was said and done, this was $801. Okay, so now that we know what kind of specs we're working with here, it's time to run some benchmarks, test out some PC gaming, and some emulation. I think I got a really good idea of how this thing is going to perform, but let's go ahead and move over to the benchmarks, then we'll get into some gaming. With this setup here, I just ran 3D Mark, and for Night Raid, we got a 15,790. Fire Strike came in with a 3,486. And finally, Time Spy with a 1,297. With the benchmarks, it's actually not looking great at all, given that I paid $800 for this. And you know, on the channel, I do a lot of Ryzen APU builds. I've been able to score much higher in each one of these with the newer 5000 series Ryzen and the built-in Vega 8 graphics. But let's get into some gaming and see how this thing really performs. So first on the list, we have Fortnite, and I knew this was going to perform pretty well, especially in performance mode. So here we have it at 1080p medium settings performance mode, which does work really well on lower end GPUs. We got an average of 140 FPS out of this one. Checking out a fighting game, we have Street Fighter V, 1080p low, and to tell you the truth, I didn't think we were going to be able to do this at 1080p low. I thought it would have to drop this down to 900p, 
but it does seem to run really well. Every once in a while, I do get a dip down to around 58, but if I didn't have that on, I probably wouldn't ever notice it. Moving over to Dirt 5, it's not looking great here. I got an average of 47 FPS by the end of this run. We're at 720p, low settings, and I do have dynamic resolution set to on. I was hoping for a little better out of this one. Back for Blood was actually pretty surprising. I did drop this down to 900p, where at low settings, I still think it looks pretty good like this. We got an average of 71 FPS. I thought going into this, I'd have to drop it all the way down to low 720p to get a steady 60 out of it, but it does a pretty decent job at 900p in this GT1030. Here's Doom Eternal, 720p, low settings, no resolution scale going on. We got an average of 31 FPS. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, you could lock this at half V-Sync on a 60 hertz monitor and run it at 30. But when it comes down to it, we're only at 720p, low settings. I knew the GTA 5 would actually perform pretty decently on this system. We have normal settings, 1080p. I got an average of 91 FPS by the end of this here. It is playable, even at 1080p. And with the GT 1030, I've actually had really good luck in the past with this game. And before we move over to some emulation, this is the final PC game I wanted to test. Cyberpunk 2077, 720p, low, 75% resolution scale. We got an average of 26 FPS out of this one. I just wanted to test a couple harder to run emulators on here, and really with these emulators it comes down to the CPU, and that 11400F does a pretty decent job with these higher end EMUs. First up, original Xbox using CXBX Reloaded, we're at 720p, DOA3, running great. Taking a look at some Wii U emulation, this little setup did a pretty decent job. We have SimU here with the Vulcan back end where it's 720p, it's running Breath of the Wild at 30, and it'll do it all day. It does really, really well at 30. I did try to go up to 60 with this, but we're only around 48 FPS on average, so 30 is definitely the way to go if you want to do this Wii U emulator, especially with Breath of the Wild. And the final emulator I wanted to throw at this was PS3 using RPCS3. We're at 720p, Vulcan back in, Skate 3, looking really good. We got 60 here. I do notice a dip every once in a while, but this is fully playable on this machine. So in the end, I guess the moral of the story is don't buy a $750 to $800 PC from Walmart without knowing the specs offhand. I was really hoping that we'd at least get a GTX 1650, and even at $800 in the time we're in right now with crazy GPU prices, even $750 to $800 for something with 8 gigs of RAM and a GTX 1650 is a bit high priced, but uh, you know, coming in here with a GT 1030 at $750 to $800 is absolutely ridiculous. You can build a machine like this with new parts for $620, or you can go much cheaper if you buy used parts on eBay. Now, one thing I do want to mention is, it's actually been a while since I've tested the GT1030, and for eSports games, it's working out great in 2021. It's definitely not the best option, but if you can pick one of these up for around 100 bucks and all you play is like Fortnite, Overwatch, Minecraft, maybe even some Rocket League, then that GT1030 would be plenty for you. And it also handles those higher-end emulators like we saw, and if you wanted to do anything lower like PSP, Dreamcast, Sega Saturn, or even GameCube and Wii upscaled to 1080p, maybe even some of those at 1440, 
This 1030 will handle it, but if you're looking for an all-out nice gaming machine that'll basically run anything at 1080p 60, then this card is definitely not for you, and I would highly recommend skipping this PC altogether. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. Like I mentioned, I was really hoping we'd get some better specs here. If I would have known that we had that GPU in here, I probably would have never picked it up, but it was kind of a mystery package, and I figured I'd try it out. If you're interested in building a similar machine for much cheaper, I will leave some links in the description. And if you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.